Drop the knife now. Drop the knife. God damn it. So you all kidnapping me? This is Ben from Evile. You're watching Megalomania with Crypto and Scully. This is Lee from Harlot, and you're listening to the Crypt and Scully and Megalomania. Happy Easter, Megalomaniacs! And remember, if you see a rabbit laying little brown eggs, don't eat them fuckers. That ain't chocolate. This is Vinny from Belushi Speedball, and you're listening to Metal Mania! With the crit and Scully! I was thinking about sucking my own dick in front of my family on Easter. And our friends in Belushi Speedball open up a special edition of Metalomania on Easter weekend. Welcome to the show, everybody. Hi, Episode guys. Episode 256. What's up, Skulls? Hey. Good to see you. 256. 256. Wow. I love it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter weekend, everybody. I love your I love your bunny ears, babe. They're they're totally working for me. What do you think of my mask? Pretty good, right? <laughs> that is some that is creepy. He's got like blood on his face and everything from whatever just killed, I guess. Oh, you know. Yeah, I, man. I, it was you. It was you. It was that time. Oh, oh, oh. It was me. Hell. Um, <laughs> we did open up the show with some blues speed ball, but we'll get to that in a second. I don't want to overlook that because I very much love those cats. But we're very excited tonight. Not only is it Easter weekend, but it is also we're going to be world premiering the new Hell Pie video tonight on the show. And we're going to be talking to those cats. So, oh, yeah. Good time. Right here tonight, later on the show. You're going to want to get there for it. <laughs> the masks are cool and all, or your mask is cool, I should say. But you got to take it off because we can't really hear what you're saying. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can't, um, you're not going to be able to hear me all night. No. Let me unfred durst my hat here. Whoa. And, all right, there you go. All right, there you go. That cool. is cool. a I like it cool though, right mask, guys. though. Yeah, check that thing out. It's pretty cool. Awesome. Pretty cool mask. I, I like will, it. however, keep my bunny ears. You can ears. keep your ears. Oh, I like I your ears. I'm losing my bow tie, though. Oh, well, you're losing your bunny bow tie, your yeah. playboy, playmate bunny bow tie? I guess so. I like your shirt. It's like you're you're broadcasting from hell with it. I yes, that. that is. I thought it was kind of appropriate. We are broadcasting from hell yeah. tonight. So, yeah. you know, I got my Enterprise Earth shirt on. We just had these guys on go. the show recently. So, 
you're going to want to check out yeah, that. Get into the that. archives if you missed that interview. Good time. Get, get some, some merch, nice. guys. Fuck yeah, get some merch. And you're going to want to support these bands. we got a great playlist in store for you tonight. Again, we opened up with the uh, Belushi Speedball, friends of ours. We've had them mm-hmm. on the show. Great interview. Very much fun, man. Hell yeah. You yeah, know, definitely. How fun was that song even ripping off municipal waste, dude? <laughs> <laughs> they are badasses, man. They, they funny. They're really... They, they've got that blend of humor and shred, and, and uh, I respect and love that, that band. They're very much fun. Right, okay. right. And, you know, thanks to them, we have the Pussy Wall. Ah, that's right. They are Mellow Media Studios. So. For a tradition around here. <laughs> that's right. They sent us a picture. When we interviewed them, they sent us the new... Uh, they sent me a T-shirt. They sent us the CD, and they sent us a picture of their cat Stella. Right, which started a trend, started so. a tradition. We want pictures of your cat, don't you? Want to you send do- us pictures of your pussy? Put your pussy on our wall. We want to add your pussy to our pussy wall. You guys, we so. know that Metalomaniac acts love. Love cats, cats. you know right. what I mean. We've already so, got a few, by the way. They're uh, starting to come in. Yeah, already. we yeah. want pictures of your cats so we so, can add it to our wall. Fuck yeah! Send us pictures of your pussy. And uh, <laughs> yeah, they started that. Uh, Belushi Speedball started that. We love you guys, man. So do show them the love. And by the way, that song was a single from them. They just put out, and it features Tony Barhoom from Condition Critical, another band we love, who nice. we've talked to on the show. And fuck yeah, Mike Jarrett is a part of, and Mike Jarrett is a part of Lich King, of course, who we just saw recently, and. There you go. It all comes, comes back circle, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we are excited to play the um, Hell Pie. You know, I'm I'm literally deciding right now as we're live. I had decided to do two segments for the show tonight where we're talking. One, we were going to talk about kind of the history of Easter. And then later in the show, we were going to break down our worst to first Easter candies. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, but since that one sounds fun and the early, other one doesn't, yeah, let's throw the like, other one out. Let's just oh. do, let's just talk candy. Let's I think talk. that's a good idea, actually. That's I'm going to go ahead and speak on behalf of everybody. Do you guys care where the word Easter came from? I mean, do you? No. Where the, the word? whole egg thing came no. from? Or, no. You know, I looked up all that stuff for you guys today. Oh, well, maybe you, know, you can tell me one day over, yeah. over dinner or something. Over joint and a campfire. Yeah, we'll all have go. that conversation. <laughs> Easter's origin. I, yeah, I looked up all that shit. Oh, look, well, look at all these notes. These are all notes I'm throwing out on the fly to yeah, you guys because I'd rather talk about fun stuff with you guys. Tell me about the candy again. We decided to do it. Well, we did it in-house. We did some of our friends and some of our social media people that we talked to quite a bit. We kind of discussed our our 10 worst to first Easter specific candies. Candies that are okay. specifically known for this holiday. Okay. And uh, 10 being the worst. 10 one being the being worst the of best. our list. Right. Okay. One being the best. <laughs> so let's say we throw out all my notes from earlier. We'll do 10 through 6 now, and then we'll play some music. We'll have Hell Pie come in, world premiere of the video. And then later in the show, we'll come back and do our top five. That's perfect. I like it. Right, and, let's, let's do it. you know, we don't want to drown out the, the video in the middle. That's I true. Mean, that's, that's true. We yeah. don't want to put everybody to sleep with fucking history lessons and shit. Although yeah. I am honestly fascinated by some of it. But, <laughs> some of it's know, cool. You never I'm know sure. What's going to yeah. Candy always translates. Right. All right. So give me number 10. What do we got? Let's all start us right, right so out the gate. This thing. On our candy, our worst to first Easter candy list. Mm-hmm. Can you guess? Can you guess what the worst one's going to be? I'm going to guess. It's, yeah, if I had to guess, like what your my worst, absolute worst is the uh, everybody marshmallow chicks. <laughs> Peeps, yep, exactly. Peeps, right, yeah, you're right. right, exactly right. The, peeps. the marshmallow chicks with like nobody the little sugar coating. I don't know anybody who eats the peeps. They're just decoration. Yeah. I really don't. Like, seriously, just decoration. I think someone on Facebook recently said, I eat those motherfuckers, and then everybody attacked them, because I've never... That's the only example Whoa. I've known of them. Yeah, weird. Hmm. Fucking weirdo eating that shit. Yeah, they're literally sugar Although balls Although, I crap. wonder how they would do in, like, a s'mores. I do like s'mores. It is that time of year right. as well. Maybe save them and, you know, add them to your campfire or something. I, see, I'm not a big marshmallow guy, but I like s'mores. That tends to be the only time I like marshmallow is in a s'mores. Yeah, right. Um, and maybe you have to get just like the little bunny faces, uh, not like the whole chick. Right. Do you know what I'm talking about? It, right. You know, just they have the, just cut a little. Cut their fucking face off and stick it in the <laughs> s'mores. I like it. You <laughs> might have just made some peeps edible. Okay. That's an edible idea. All right, All right you want to go to number nine? Yeah, what's number nine? Number nine on our list is the chocolate-covered marshmallow eggs. Chocolate-covered uh, marshmallow Chocolate-covered eggs. marshmallow eggs. I, These with like that creamy are, marshmallow filling thing stuff. No, like, I know what you're thinking of, and that is on the list in a second. Okay. But I, these are actually just like shells of chocolate with literal like that whipped uh, marshmallow in it. Again, back to okay. the marshmallow. Marshmallow doesn't seem to be popular amongst many of you. Okay. 
but it's like that. What was you could buy that cans of it? Like what's that whip stuff? What was that shit called? Mallow or marshmallow or Ma- something mallow like that? Or yeah, something. I know what you're talking about. I think I know. Yeah, I don't, it's that I never shit. Liked it and chocolate. People right. put it on like peanut butter sandwiches, right? It, for me, it reminds about? me of toothpaste. Honestly, Ew, oh well, you know, I don't want to eat toothpaste know. covered filled chocolate. You know, that's not my shit. <laughs> that's funny, but that's what I think of. But so, again, okay. I'm not a marshmallow guy. All right, so appropriately nine, low on the list. Yeah, okay. So far, they're shitty. All so. right. <laughs> Uh, number eight is the one I believe you were trying to you were you thought I was talking about a second ago, which oh, is what? the Cadbury cream egg. Oh, it, it, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, but I don't know what that filling is. But you made it look like a raw egg, yeah. so I'll never taste it. Ever. Just thrown on the visuals alone, right? <laughs> it looks like an egg and a chocolate. Like yeah, the chocolate's got a that? baby chicken in it. Uh, well, I get why you. <laughs> I agree. I, I get why you don't like it, but they're not bad. I mean, I don't hate them, but I, what's funny is. Uh, most of the people who talked about it earlier either love them or hate them. There does tend to be not. I am in the middle, but there doesn't seem to be much of that. Everyone gotcha. either loved them or hated them. Gotcha. Uh, but now, you know, they've got quite a bit of variation on them now. I believe there's like caramel ones and cookies and cream ones and all that kind of shit. So I see. So go out there. So and yeah, I've never tried any of those. A so. new version of the Cadbury. Maybe it's egg. edible now. Yeah. <laughs> hey man, they probably got some that don't look like there's an egg yolk in the middle, and then you can eat it. Hmm. So. Although, you know what? If I was absolutely forced to eat either a Peep or a Cadbury egg, yeah, I'm eating the Peep. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. So for you, that would be lower on the list as the Cadbury yeah. egg. Okay. Yeah. The Cadbury egg. just right. Or maybe I'll eat the outer chocolate and like dump out the yolk. Like, <laughs> like I don't know. Uh, yeah. I'm going to just feed you Cadbury yolks later, straight on a Gross. plate oh. out of a spoon. Ugh. We're going to spoon them into your... Anyhow. Yeah. Ugh. That was yeah. number eight is the Cadbury cream egg. All right, number seven. <laughs> number seven for me, for I mean, for you guys, for our list, is the foil-wrapped chocolate egg. Oh, okay. Just like the standard chocolate. Yeah, just a standard ball of chocolate wrapped okay. in foil. You know, those are... They're shitty chocolate, honestly. Oh. Well, that they are repackaged fine. every year. I know, what number well, is it? No, number this is number seven okay uh, appropriately numbered i would say right, for sure um they you have to get them because it's a staple in the easter basket sure. so like among the grass you know that's in the basket you have to have like the egg looking decoration so they they work yeah, yeah they are and they're stable. edible they so they're and good they're edible. Yeah. well again now i say they're shitty chocolate but chocolate's much like pizza you know even bad pizza is good pizza it's you know it's just chocolate right, all right it's still exactly. chocolate all right so, so I'm, i do I, I have some in the bag right the in the problem with those though one. You never get all the foil off, oh, so you're gonna true. always be like we're, the what are the you know we're gonna get all get, all get Alzheimer's sick. yeah yeah because Alzheimer's. we all ate edible I mean foil when we were that's young. that's a good tip for those yeah. who do not know do not ingest <laughs> aluminum foil that has been tied ingestion of aluminum foil has been tied to Alzheimer's studies repeatedly in fact so like every so, time you stab your potato you yeah. know at a restaurant or Take something the pota- you aluminum foil, foil off, off first. Or, yeah, um, your eggs, sure. you know, you you know, you've been eating that shit your whole life. That's that's why you're gonna get sick when you're old. If you eat this candy, get all the fucking aluminum foil. <laughs> it. And you know, we didn't. What didn't make the list is those coins, like chocolate coins that are wrapped in the foil. Also, like the yeah. gold foil, they okay. look like gold coins, but they're right. chocolate. You know, same thing. They didn't. Make, those didn't make the list. But make sure you don't get that foil. Get the wrapper so. off. The okay. foil ain't good for you. <laughs> All right, now let's do number six, and then we'll right, get more, to some and jams. Then we'll take a little break for some yeah, music. Get some music and get help right. in here. Uh, number six on our list is Reese's peanut butter egg. The Reese's Whoa. peanut butter egg. It's a little egg. low for Reese's, in my opinion. I well, think. you know, I'm a huge Reese's fan. Right. I do Most love Reese's. Are, right? I'm a huge, but for this one's different. The the re, the one they do for Easter, the egg is the ratio is <gasps> off. It's too much peanut butter. Oh, you know, you it make too a much good peanut point. butter. Yeah, it, it's kind of a thin bit of chocolate too. It's not like the, the normal, you know. Right. Well, yeah, these two. Right. 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 It's like a thin bit of chocolate and and too much. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. You. You. I stand corrected. Six might be a good spot for that. See. Right. If the ratio were different, they need. You know what they should do is they should still make it like they do, but run an extra run of chocolate right through the middle of that big glob Mm, of peanut butter. Maybe. Or just make the chocolate thicker. The outer layer of chocolate thicker. I like the way you think. You know, just giving me more chocolate. Give me more chocolate. Right. Okay. (laughs) I think that's a good plan. You know, I do. I'm a huge Reese's guy. One of my snacks, even if, that I allow myself, is the dark chocolate Reese's these days because it's kind of low. But you like it dark, and I like the dark ones. And better, you like yeah. it thin, which dark and thin. I yeah. will say, I, I am I not huge on the on the Reese's <laughs> either. Um, but you have got me in, hooked on those because you keep yeah, them in great. the fridge they're too. Wonderful. Yeah. Oh, and you got so have it's cold. like a perfect little snack, like one perfect. little thin Warm. little, and the 
the the thin ones are perfect amount of peanut butter because I'm not really big on peanut butter. She doesn't need. Yeah, um, so it's like that. just the like right butter, amount of it. Yeah, perfect. Have to it has to so go great. So is Reese's going to send us a check now for all that commercial? Oh, yeah, we just right. Gave we just gave them. How many of you are out there running out to get recent Reese's after that <laughs> strong endorsement? Dark, thin Reese's. Um, uh, all right, so let's do some music. Because they do got the power. All right. <laughs> all right, well, let's, speaking of power, let's play some music. You're right. And let's play I'm some I'm excited jams. for this. Yeah, Fuck yeah. Well, we're going to open up with two okay. jams here for you. And what that's going to be is our brother Lawrence, is you may know, who who's come on the show in the past a couple of times now, actually. Mm -hmm. He is a part of Wolfpack. He is a part of Trader, both bands we love. But we are going to play his other band that he's in, which is Rezet tonight. Okay. Because they have a brand new album coming out, and they got a brand new single that they've released, and I'm looking forward to playing it for you. Uh, the new album will be called New World Murder. New World Murder. Okay. Which I think is pretty fucking badass. And we're going to play okay. Devil's Bride from it for you right now. Okay. And then right behind that, we're going to play Kubla Khan, Texas. Kubla Khan TX. Uh, lowest form of animal is out now from these dudes. Okay. I am a huge fucking fan. I think this release is silly. The last one was silly. I hear many debates out there about this band. You know, are they metalcore? Are they heavy beat down hardcore kind of thing? I don't care what the fuck label you hang on them. I think they're ridiculously, insanely good. And I love this release. So we're going to play the Jam Dynasty from that nice. brand new release from that Cats. And then, you know okay. what? Right behind them, let's bring Hell Pie in. Hell Pie in. You'll talk to them for a little bit. And then you'll play their world premiere. World premiere video for Are Rubber Bullets. Are you guys drinking on the world premiere? Yeah. Tonight instead of debut, right? I, yeah. I don't know if we I warned everybody. But, said or not. But yeah, tonight we decided instead of debut, since we don't have very many debuts tonight, although I just said it five times. <laughs> when we say world premiere, when we say world Easter, premiere. or when we say Scully, or when we say metal, no, or when we say... world <laughs> premiere tonight. <laughs> when we say world premiere, have a drink, or whatever you do, so... All right, cool. Well, there you go. I think that brings us up to date. All Hang right. out with us for a little while. After all this, we'll get to our other five on our candies for Easter list as well. Much love. Much metal. Don't go nowhere. All right, sounds good. Hi, it's Lauren Space Player from Reset. I'm hanging out with Crip. We're on Metal Mania with my dudes. Thanks for having us. Stay tuned, stay metal, and stay sane, motherfuckers. <laughs> Okay, I'm pretty sure you just compared a vagina to an asshole. <laughs> and?
It all started with the controversial Stevenson Gorman film in 1967, showing a grungy, unkempt bunny hiding eggs in the Pacific Northwest. It was quickly labeled a hoax by the commercial egg industry, causing speculation as to the link between the two. Look, I got nothing to say to you, Toots. Well, what do you have to say to the children when they learn the birds can't spread their wings, let alone see sunlight? Look, I got nothing to say, all right? Leave you alone. Let the hunt for Halliday's Easter egg begin. You think I'm hanging out with Dracula and the Easter Bunny? Fuck off! Can I see one of those pamphlets you got, man? Yeah. In my career, this is a pretty bizarre case. That's 42-year-old Avril Sistoni, who deputies say is the woman behind the mysterious pornographic and religious-filled Easter eggs that popped up inside dozens of mailboxes since last week. Uh, last night, we started getting calls again in a different part of Palm Coast, the same M.O. Once deputies pulled her over, they say she admitted to leaving her job at Publix early so she could distribute over 400 pamphlets in four days like this one here. Deputies say she also stuffed the eggs with a few squares of toilet paper, a goldfish cracker, and some Skittles. And now for something completely different. And welcome back to the studio, gang, as we in continue to enjoy great friends of ours coming by, man. And today is no exception, as I got my brother's help high in the house, man. What's up, gentlemen? How you guys doing? Ooh, what's that? Doing good. Doing great. Ah, 
You're making my day. You're making my day, man. Big fan. And local, right around the corner here, man. So that's always awesome. Represent. Well, this was, of course, long overdue, man. And for those out there who do not already know you, and if they've been following our show, they know that they know the local badassery, especially. But for those who do not know you, introduce yourself, gentlemen. I'm Eddie from Hell Pie. I uh, yell at you and play my guitar. And Bones from Hell Pie. I beat shit and been doing it in Southern Maryland for about 30 years. Fuck yeah, man. Well, I'm a big, big fan along the way, and I'm loving the new release, which we'll get to that in a moment and shit. But, uh, you know, we, we have long, of course, history. I, I noticed both of you guys got your sniper's hat on, and I feel very bad that I do not now. I, I should have been in the club. I got a bunch of those around. But um, we do have our mutual buddy, Mike Bozier. Shout out to Bozier there, out there, gang. Mike. Oblivion Studios and Cybers of Babel and all those good things. So, And I have been bugging him, actually. You know, he's been my my bridge. I've been like, hey, Mike, man, let me, give me them hell pie guys so I can talk to them fucking guys, man. I need to talk to these cats. So that's a beautiful thing. Well, and, of course, you guys are right now very busy and submerged and getting long gone into Oblivion out into the world. Is that correct? Tell me about tell me about what you're what you're into. Give me a give me an up to date state of affairs for Hell Pie, gentlemen. Yeah, well, we put that album together uh, right at the end of the year um, last year, coming out of the pandemic for two years. So that was uh, that was nice to have something to show for that wretched. Two years, yeah, right? Medicinal, uh, almost, right? You know, yeah. Well, yeah, without that, we might not be here. No uh, bullshit, right? But yeah, we uh, we we did all the all the hard work, and we put it together, and Bozier uh, mixed it and put his magic dust on it, and then we got a we got a guy down, and I think he's well, no, he's in he's in Florida now, named Pete from uh, Java Fiend. What's up, Pete? Uh, he does our artwork. So we got him to, uh, to to put us an, another album cover together, which is awesome. It is awesome. To, it is. We love to put that on everything. Uh, yeah, and I tried to make all the songs on this one a little more, uh, a little less vague because I usually try to keep my writing vague enough for you to interpret it, whether you can want to agree with it or not. Right. This one I kind of tried to get a little more specific with some meanings and a little more current. Yeah, you because know, people are going through a lot of shit now, and uh, you know everyone wants to fucking argue about shit. And now I'm on this side, and you're on that side, and I'm like, you know what? You, you don't have to be on a side. You just fucking have to be present. You know, be here. We're all here, so you don't have to be on a side. You can be wrong. You could be right. You know, it doesn't matter. I, well, I tell you what, I make the case all the time. We're picking sides and we're picking the wrong sides, man. It's us against them, not us against each other. What the fuck? That's crazy. I, I'm blown away by the division amongst yeah. our, ourselves at this. You know what I mean? We're, they're they're putting their fucking foot on our heads and we're fighting with each other over nickels and shit instead of them. What the fuck? That's crazy. Right. It's, it's the fucking Coliseum, you know, man. Like it, if you keep the fucking gladiators out there and you keep them entertained, they won't notice the shit they're getting screwed with on the back end. Goddamn right, man. Hey, in the art of war, divide comes before conquer for a reason, my friend. I'm just saying, so. True. But as how easily we fall victim to it. Well, and I'll make the case, though, that albums such as this that are eye-opening, that are a bit of a punch in the face, that are a bit, dare I say, anti-establishmentism, which is, I thought, the foundation we built this metal thing on many, many years ago. If You, I, you know, I thought that was the case. I'm shocked how many have fallen in line with it these days, but. That's a conversation right. for another show, but but perhaps this is what we need, man, to kind of, as we do awaken from our post-COVID slumber, we need this hell pie kicking the dick to kind of reopen our fucking eyeballs. What do you think of that, man? What, are that's, you here that, to do that, that, man? Because it seems like that's what you're doing, and I love you for that's, it. Yeah, that, that's exactly what we were going for. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah. We, need to, we need to reunite and create the fucking future we want instead of bitching about the shit that's going on back then or even now. Like, there's the shit we need to fucking make happen down the line is the important shit. Dude, I, I'm telling you, I'm a broken record. We <laughs> are least, we are the less least oppressed generation in the history of mankind, and we bitch more than anyone ever. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, who's tired of living through historical events? I think I am. <laughs> yeah, right. I could go for a break from that myself for a little bit, dude. Let's, you know... <laughs> 
let's have the next big news story for the next couple of years be fucking you know sports or something related. I could use a break from world events, man. I really could. Fuck. Yeah. Or hey, you know, there's a new uh, STD out there. We got to watch out for y'all. Need to focus on that for a while. <laughs> hey, you watch your mouth, man. It's coming. <laughs> That'll be next month. We'll revisit this in a few months when I fuck. You know, when I turn on the TV and they're like flaming dick disease. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like that fucking Alpine guy knew it. But <laughs> I'm a prophet. <laughs> well, let's get back to you guys. Actually, fuck the world. Let's talk Alpine and give me a, a, a. You know, you guys have been around for a, a few minutes, if you don't mind. My saying, give me a little background on how what created the impetus that would become Alpine and gave it some legs and gave it some staying power. I met Bones. Me and him were in a band. I, I had I, I had dropped out of music. I was in a band called Cock Farm. Shout out to Mike and John. Um, Fuck yeah! And uh, I I got burned out, so I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stop doing everything. So I was laying on my couch one day, and this dude Mike called me and said, uh, "You want to be in a cover band?" And I was like, "I've never been in a cover band. Okay, sure." So I was like, "All right, fuck it." So Why not? <clears throat> joined a cover band called. Uh, we ended up calling it Soul Crusher with Bones and a couple other dudes. And uh, well, what what time frame is this? Give me give me a little. What what years are we talking when this happened? What was that? Two thousand nine. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Two thousand. Yeah. Somewhere around there. eight or nine. <clears throat> right around the uh, the recession, the Great Recession. Ah, the Great Housing Collapse. Okay, cool. All right. right. When, that, when, yeah. when my condo went from being worth one hundred and eighty thousand to fifty nine thousand, that uh, that was a good year. In about 13 minutes. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I'm finally recovering from that now. Right. Uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. All right. Well, that does give me some some sauce, a little sauce on it. So that's the background. And you guys are saying, let's do a cover band. All right. Give it. Keep. Yeah. So we did a bunch of shows with the you know, hardest thing was putting together a set of songs that I can't, that I can stand to listen to on the radio. That was my hardest problem with being in the cover band. I was like, I'm not singing anything that I wouldn't say myself. And that was really fucking hard. Dude, Ed, we're kindred spirits, brother. I feel your pain <laughs> on that. So, but we ended up doing it, played a bunch of shows. It went pretty good. But then we kind of got into the, well, this guy wants to leave and that guy needs to leave. And we, me and I was like, hey, Bones, let's just go start a band. So we pulled Danny, who was the original bass player, who was actually the guitar player for Soul Crusher to be our bass player. And we put together an album called Infernal Slice, and that was 2011. Yep. And uh, it, was, it was all up and up from there. That went really well. Um, I have it, others. yeah. Then we put uh, put another CD together called Love to Burn with Danny. And uh, when we were doing shows on that one is, is when he unfortunately passed away, um, which was a really... I, you know, it was out of the blue. I had no idea. There was, he, I still don't know who, what really went down with that. <clears throat> but he didn't come. He, he didn't show up for a show, which is completely un, unlike him. And uh, I called him. He wasn't there. And fortunately, one of the guys who was at the show was uh, was a backup. Was, had had set stepped in on another show when Danny was out of town to play a show. So we were able to still play the show Ugh. and uh because we were like eh, we're here you know we can borrow some equipment so we did it we did a show and on the way home because we were way out in where were we? west virginia or something so on the way home i tried to stop by danny's house his car was there and i called him and uh and he didn't answer so we did a wellness check and it all went that way so that was that album Ugh, and uh, awful, awful. there's a lot of really good tunes on that one that, that Danny Danny wrote a couple and I wrote a couple. It's it really a, a slamming album. Uh, so yes, yeah, so after that we kind of had to take a step back, find a new bass player. We did an acoustic album after that to kind of change gears for a bit. Fucking and regroup, then, uh, you know? Yeah, you know, change, a... change, you know, stop trying to push back into the old sound and just change everything up so we could just write some stuff to get it out. Okay. And uh, and then yeah, so then we played as many shows. Then right, then we took a break. We took a break for about six months because we were like, we're gonna write some shit. We had two shows that we were gonna come back, and that was the weekend that they put us on lockdown for COVID. <laughs> so 
So six months turned into two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah. So we were like, well, yeah. So, uh, so we, we, we used our time wisely and we kicked around a bunch of tunes back and forth on Dropbox and put them all together. And we like called up Bojer and said, Hey man, you ready? Uh, ready for some more bacon at Oblivion? And he said, come on down. So, uh, that's this one. Fuck yeah. So, well, going into the, the COVID situation, did, were you already like gearing up to make a record or what did that detail were you? I mean, was it like, oh, well, we're going to do that. Well, now we got to do it right now. Like now that well, we, have we no had like, options. we had like two songs already ready okay. To, okay. to start throwing into the set. Right. And then since we couldn't play any shows, we're like, well, we'll take those two songs and add another six to eight to them and we got an album so let's keep well, do that let's begin our, our long going into oblivion rod here as a matter of fact you know and, and who knew holy fuck it would be fucking two years and craziness <laughs> and no shows and you know, where the fuck is the toilet paper and fuck oh my god you know what the fuck <laughs> yeah yeah as soon as that toilet paper shit happened i went on amazon and bought me a bidet <laughs> did you really yeah i was <laughs> like fuck it i don't need any toilet paper <laughs> God damn it! You're killing me because Scully's killing. <laughs> Scully's driving me crazy to buy her a, a bit day for her man. She wants that bad, you know. Oh Is, man, my my wife was like, "I'll never use that thing." I'm like, "Go ahead, try it once." Never use anything. Like, else. Yeah. And now, now she's like, "Anytime I use the bathroom anywhere, I feel like a dirty peasant." Yeah, right. <laughs> I, I will say though, for years, man, toilet paper is the best we can do. Come on, man. Come on, man. Right. There's got to be something better. Anyway, uh, it, as, as the folks at home are like, okay, where did this interview just go, right? Hey, Metal shitting. Yeah. Hey, we all got an asshole. And uh, <laughs> my wife just married hers. That's all. So anyway, um, <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, what a crazy ride, man. I mean, albums like going, Long Going Into Oblivion and are fueling that return to the world, man. And that's such a vital yeah. part for us metalheads, man. I got You got to know that. Yeah, it's important for me that you know that, gentlemen. For sure, appreciate that. I hope that's what it's doing. Oh man, you, you're you're making my blood move faster through my veins, man. That's what I need, dude. I felt sludgy the last couple of years, you know. So, nice. <laughs> was you guys' musical approach always from the start a very clear and defined vision? Did you guys always kind of share that um, the aesthetics that would make Hell Pie, or was that something you worked out, or was that more just kind of generically how it, how it fell into place, or what was your approach well, to your view to to what would be Hell Pie? Uh, we just we just jam a lot, you know. We would we would feel each other out, and we we tend to record when we're warming up for the first fifteen minutes of a practice or something like that. And we just jam on whatever, and then we record it, and then we we'll go back and re- listen to it and be like, "Hey, man, that those three parts actually fucking work." And then I'll we'll okay. go back and mix them back in, try to remember how we did it, and do it again, <laughs> and do it again. Yeah. Eventually, it becomes a song. I'm, Say some stupid shit over it, and there we go. Well, yeah, Ed's, Ed's great at Ed's great at uh, communicating. So it's like, what 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 kind of beat do you feel there? And he's just he can just communicate that. And I'm like, is this right? And it's like typically clicks. So just a, a no. great partnership. You got to be friends. You got to be brothers in this. So true, man. You know, there's a reason that whenever. Uh, any there, there's a reason that there, there's a term that goes for anybody trying to partner up you know you got to make good music together because when you're actually making music together you know that that partnership is very important you know so that's yeah a it's not thing. just a cliche yeah that's right <laughs> yeah, that shit all comes from somewhere right yeah <laughs> what, what's the best place for everybody to get their hands on long gone into oblivion man i i know that you guys are on band camp and all what what where do you guys prefer people go to to pick it up Goes really the band. Oblivion? What about Oblivion? Yeah, really Bandcamp, helphigh.bandcamp.com. You can get our T-shirts and hoodies, stickers, and all four CDs. Got package deals. Really great stuff. Other than that, go to helphigh.com. That's got everything there. Um, all of our links, social media, um, upcoming video, and our events. Oh, we do have an event as well. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. What's coming up for you guys, man? I'll make sure we get this out there and in, in, in public eyes. So what, what's this event you guys are getting ready to be a part of? We are hitting Richmond at the um, Bandito Burrito Lounge. Fuck yeah! On May seventh, with um, Throwdown Syndicate from DC, 
333 from Richmond and Mortal Ground from I think they're from Virginia somewhere. Yeah, yeah. But they represent yeah, yeah. the DC Metro DMV area. Well, and you guys aren't too far from me. Let me throw. Let me ask you. And no pressure. It's not like you're being filmed or anything. But uh, could I talk you into coming and hanging out with us in the studio and maybe co-hosting a show live with us at some point, man? That would be awesome. Oh yeah, I'm down. We've dragged both of us in person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm told I'm less so. So fuck, I don't know. You know, well, of course, only by my wife though. So, but, but there you go. That's good shit, man. Well, tell me about this song we're gonna play for everybody tonight, man. Give me a little background to this one. This was called Rubber Bullets. Uh, it basically breaks down uh, our our social and civil and political issues slightly and also points out the fact that you know what's right and what's left who fucking cares we need to get together um uh, and that's that's most of it but you know it's basically current events well at least it was when when i wrote it when we wrote it um so it's probably six months eight months ago current events well, I love you fucking guys. And let's be honest, we could talk about idiots for a long, long time because there's many, many examples in this stupid ass world of, of it. And uh, hey, and some people might say I'm one and they might not be wrong. But I'll tell you right now, I fucking my life is better when I got help. I plan for it and, and I'll take it. You take the victories you can get. You know what I mean? Glad to do it. Fuck yeah, That's man. why we're here. We're here for you, brother. We're Fuck here for yeah. you. And I need you. I need you, man. <laughs> Well, let's play everybody this fucking video and kick him in the dick. What do you say? I think we should do that. Get ready for the world premiere, the first time aired anywhere in the world, the video from Hell Pie, Rubber Bullets. Duck and cover, bitches.
was awesome. How fucking awesome is Hell Pie for coming by and sharing that jam with us? We love you dudes, man, for real. Big fans. And you know what's awesome about them, too, that I failed to mention earlier, but we talked a little bit about it in the interview there, but Oblivion Studios helped make that album come Very into existence. Cool. And that's awesome. our buddy Mike Bozier. You know, we got a yeah. big cool family going Local on right here. Guide us. Fuck yeah. Awesome. Great stuff, I man. Shout it. out to Mike Bozier. Love that dude, too. And shout out to Hell Pie. Love you, motherfuckers. Thanks for coming out and making our weekend for Easter special, gentlemen. For real. Yeah, hell yeah. Means a lot. Real quick, I want to rom- remind everybody to support the scene. Do that. Um, that's why we're here, and it that's what we ask purpose. of you. So like, follow, and subscribe, of course, to all of these bands. That's something free and something simple that you can easily do. It's free. And then if you can, beyond that, buy some merch. Buy some merch. Yeah. That's not free, bands, but it's guys. awesome if you can do it for yeah, sure. Yeah, man. I got my Enterprise Earth shirt on. We just like talked it. to these guys on the band mm-hmm. on the show not too long ago. You got a cool hat on there. Oh, too. yeah. Toxic Grown. We just saw these guys live, actually. Yeah. Interviewed them on the show and talked to them live. And right. So, you got that, actually, I think, at the show, if I'm not yes, mistaken. Yes, I did. So. Yes, I did. Yep. Got to get your merch when you get to the show. I love your you gotta broadcasting help pay for the gas shirt. to get around these yeah, days. No so, shit, no. um, my so shirt is not band related, but I thought it was kind of on topic. I like it. Broadcasting you from know. hell on Easter. Yeah, this is your news right now. <laughs> yeah, you know, metal news from hell so, on Easter. I like it. I like where this you're is that. the world well, today. And speaking of news, what we're reporting to you tonight is our countdown of our Easter candies. Mm. You know, that's our news report. Our official Metalomania news report this week is about candy. It's about chocolate. It's about sugar. Things so, we know you like. That's right. That's right. All right, so let's, let's just talk get about right nudity to it. again. What next is week. number five? Number five on our list is the wonderful, is the amazing Robin Egg. <gasps> oh, my favorite. Oh, they should be much higher than this five. Would, I knew this would be. This, basically, your these one. are like the little whoppers. Right. Many right? Easter whoppers, basically, yeah. Which are amazing. Repapis, I love them. Repackaged, repurposed whoppers. I, my only thing is they need to like x-ray them or something or i don't even know how you would detect it but occasionally you get that one that like doesn't I know exactly. like malt right or something right, that you know, little like, squished up ball of dusty it's whatever. not right it looks normal on the outside you Case have no gross. idea until you stick it in your mouth and then it's too late you have no idea until stick it and in then your mouth. it sucks <laughs> Well, because either then you have to like go for another one because you got to like clear that taste out of your mouth. But now you're afraid. Or guzzle milk. Because you never know if you're going to get, you know, another bad whopper. Right. right. How many are there? What what treats are there out there? Like, you know, they got those hidden nasties in there. Like the one that's going to like ruin it. Like popcorn's got an occasional kernel that'll bust your tooth. You know what I mean? What are those? There are a couple goodies out there that got like those occasional you just gross gotta be things careful that one there. thing right and, and we all take That's it for up. even though the, like in spite of that one thing like, yeah. oh yeah, yeah you're, still, you're still gonna you know. stick your face in there and get your whopper right you better believe Fuck yeah Fuck yeah. robin eggs so, are robin office. eggs all right yeah. i'm down yeah. uh, but you know i prefer the little ones you know they come like little mini ones and they come big ones oh yeah right i actually on. prefer the little ratio is better with the chocolate to wa- to malted whatever and you're way less likely to get a bad one oh, okay. i've found oh that's good to know yeah um, maybe like it, the process you know the big ones it takes a little more or something i don't, I don't can you get robin I eggs at red robin yum Okay, maybe not. <laughs> um, you got to play the cricket. <laughs> All right. Number four on our list. Okay. Number four on our list is the Cadbury mini chocolate egg. The Cadbury made by the same people that made the cream egg. Okay. But these are actually basically M&M's. They're the little miniature. <laughs> they're so they hard candy coated. Hard candy coated. The chocolate is a better quality than the foil cover chocolate we talked about earlier. It's okay. a creamier chocolate. Hmm. And the shell is a little different in an M M&M and M, and that the shell is a little somewhat dusty almost. Like if you have a handful of them, if you eat a handful of them, it leaves a little tiny oh, dustiness to your hand or whatever okay. kind of, you know. No, I don't. I didn't realize that. But those, honestly, that might be my favorite. The robin eggs may be your favorite, but these might be my favorite. I could, if you let me, especially when I was fat, I could eat a bag of those bitches in a minute. <laughs> Cadbury mini chocolate. Both eggs. of those are good for just keeping at the bottom of like, or put like, you know, just right. dump a bunch of them into the bottom of the, Easter, into basket, the Easter basket, you know, and you're good to go. Decoration purposes. And yeah. they t- Tasty, yummy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan of the robin eggs. Okay. I mean, the Cadbury eggs. You're a robin eggs. I'm a Cadbury eggs. Yeah. What do you say we get together and let our eggs touch each other? Whoa. All right. All right. So weird, number but... three. <laughs> number three. I know this is a big one for you specifically as well. Oh, okay. I don't know where it ranks versus the robin eggs, but uh, 
not just jelly beans, but which ones? Which jelly beans do you love, Scully? Oh, they have to be Starburst. There you go. That's yeah, number three no, on our list. there are no other jelly beans. As oh, far as I'm concerned. I beg to differ. As does our list, but oh, we'll get okay. to that in a minute. Well, you know, we'll get to actually, that in a minute. there's a zillion jelly beans out there. You know, you're right because but, uh, the last time I was at the store, they didn't have the Starburst ones. But you know what I did find. Oh, I do. Sweet I tart eaten. ones. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, 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 the I haven't tried yeah, them yet. Yeah, they're amazing. Oh, you better not yeah, fucking eat them all before they're, I they're get gonna, to them. You better get on them. Because you know, I love sweet tarts oh. and jelly beans. I love chewy sweet, sweet tarts. So. so the jelly beans are essentially that. Is it? Yes. They're oh, you better not eat them. They're if you wonderful. Eat them all, you better get me another bag. They may bag. be gone already. No, I'm oh, kidding. There's, there's plenty. There's plenty. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Starburst jelly beans made our list. Though Starburst is those are the ones she scouts for. Yeah. And you can I get like them those. sometimes other I like Jolly Ranchers ones too, but... Not always, but sometimes you right. can find them off I wonder if you can order them online and get them anytime I'm, of the year. But. I'm sure you do that. Well, we had one of our people earlier say that Starburst Jelly Beans should come also in a strawberry-only bag, which I think is a fantastic idea. Yeah. I would, I would eat that one of those way too often. And that they should be available all year round, like you were saying there a second ago. So I like every one but the yellow one. I don't like the yellow one. I like them all. No. Uh, I like I even, them. I now, like strawberry is my favorite, but I like them all. The green one's really good. Mm. I like them all. Do the green ones make you honey? <laughs> Do they, baby? Okay. Uh, number two, you said Starburst jelly beans were the best ever. Well, there's another jelly With bean the on our that list. Maybe sweet tarts might get on there. Yeah, sweet tarts are good. They're okay. good. But that's not on our number two. Oh, okay, what is it? Number then? two is Nerds Jelly Beans. Oh, I didn't even know Nerds made jelly beans. Nerds Jelly Beans. Yeah, Whoa, man. okay. Well, I'm willing to endorse it without even trying it. Yeah, right. Uh, nerds I, are good. They know what you they're doing. You love Nerds. Yeah. She loves Nerds, too. You what's married the, a nerd. You married the a center nerd. like? Is it like a jelly bean center Ooh, uh, yeah, with like a, a nerd coating? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Nerd candy coating with jelly bean center. You I know you want that. that. Yeah, I you do. want that already. I do. Somebody send us a bag of those, would you? Um, <laughs> I still like nerds. Yeah, nerds are great. They're yeah, good. we are. I, you never outgrow candy. You know, Dude, it's funny. I always thought what? you did because my father never liked candy as I, you know, as an oh. adult. Yeah, he was not a candy guy. They liked like cakes and cupcakes and shit. Right, they like those right, kind of sweets, but not, but candy. not candy. Right. <laughs> but, so uh, I don't know the history of nerds, but in my brain, it's basically some guy was like, you know, all this trash that's just dribbling down here that we're like these other scooping candies. up, yeah. you know, from, a, right. right. Well, we could just sell that yeah. and people will fucking eat that shit up because it's just like the sugary fucking sugar, shit. Or whatever, you know. And they're lovely. And somebody was like, oh, you're a nerd. Of course you want to make like the trash and, the money, you know, so, you know what I mean? And they're like, all right, fuck you. I'm going to call it nerds even too. And then like he came Boom. up with his like billion dollar fucking oh, industry. Yeah. Wow, I like it. That's so, how you make That's money. my theory on how nerds were created. Uh, oh, I thought you were telling me what really happened. That's no, just a if you learn that's otherwise, okay. yeah, if you learn otherwise, don't oh, tell okay. me. I don't well, know. Yeah, don't even tell us. <laughs> we don't want to know if it's different. That's, that's our story, and we're sticking to it. So. <laughs> fuck yeah, man. The modern American. Let's be uninformed on purpose. <laughs> Oh, fucking loudly uninformed. Wildly uninformed on purpose. Okay, <laughs> I believe that brings us to number one, right? Did we did the nerds? Did we sufficiently talk about nerd jelly beans? So. We want some, right? So yeah. we decided yeah. we want some. Yeah, we. All right. Well, number um, one is a agreement. classic. We're gonna go with a classic. The good old fashioned. You can't go wrong with it. Everyone's had at least a zillion of them in their life. The hollowed out chocolate bun. Oh, yeah, the good old man. fashioned. Good old fashioned. Which chocolate. nobody's ever. Good old fashioned like a like hand job. Bite, yeah, you know? right. You eat like everybody the ear eats off. the ears off of them and throws the rest that's away. Right. Yeah, or you eat the. T Sometimes they have that eyeball that's like the little disc of candy. People <laughs> yeah, eat those off of them and then the ears and yeah. that's it. You know, because it sits somewhere. What are you going to do with it? Unless you put it in a fucking baggie, which nobody does. Nobody does that. You yeah, eat the ears should... off of it, you put it down, and then it's trash later. It should come in a resealable package of yeah, some right. sort. Yeah, I get it. Or totally like smaller, true. I guess. Oh, you know what you could do, though? Uh -oh. Maybe like, although it'd only be like the bottom half, so it'd be a little weird. Maybe right. if like Gobble it's only the, the upper, tor upper, upper torso anyway. <laughs> right. I don't know. I don't know how this works. Fill it with ice cream. Oh, I like that. When and then you get you have to the like bottom a... half, scoop ice cream in that bitch. Yeah. And you like... Dude, break it in half and fill both halves with ice cream and have you and a buddy. Well, one you got to hold, I guess, because well, you can't set that down. You'll be all right. You'll survive it. <laughs> it's got ice cream in it. It's so you'll be ice good. Cream be happy, goddammit. <laughs> well, there you go, man. I hope, what do you guys think of our list? We, what did we leave off? What did we have too high? What did we give no love to that we should have? What did we give too much love to besides Kelly's butt? 
Any other suggestions? Do we? Have le- I can't even think of other Easter. Remember the Cadbury like... Bunny egg, like where the, it's like every animal but a bunny was the, the trying out to be oh, the Cadbury I do thing. Remember that, Didn't they yeah. do some kind of weird play Maybe. on that in like some kind of commercial recently where mm. it was not the traditional? Perhaps mm. purse collapse. If you find maps. that, you should share that with purse maps mirror. All right, well, there you go. You know, we do have to give a special shout out since we're talking about Easter to the remember the paddle, the ball and paddle thing you used oh to get. Oh my god. The, in your basket every year, yes. the stupid fucking thing. It always broke off. Trash. And, yeah, know, they never made it like an snap hour. Snap in your fucking eyeball or By something. By lunchtime on Easter, they were it's garbage. Trash. Well, you always used them to hit your sister in the face with a ball, and then your dad would yoke it out of your hand. or You know, they always became the paddle that your dad wanted to whip your ass with. <laughs> but thankfully, they were trash, so it yeah, didn't hurt. Yeah, they right, <laughs> fell apart. Right. Maybe you get a that's splinter. That's like yeah, right. That's you hope for. I got to get tetanus because I got a splinter from my spanking. <laughs> there you go. Fuck yeah. So are you ready for Easter? Though? Jax. What do you got? Oh, Jax. That was another Is that a thing? Like, do people still well, I, I know when think... I was young, every, dead? my grandparents used to always like put Jax in the Easter basket. You know? Yeah. I wonder if that's still a thing. I don't know. Like, how many of those? One of the older adults would always like try to teach you how to play, and you'd be sitting there like, I'm like, this was a game? Yeah, Jax. You did this for fun? This was like, fun, huh? Oh, you can't yeah. sell Jax to the younger kids today, no, man. No, no way. No, not at all. They got way different. Dude, I'm not kidding you. Recently, I was talking to a younger cat, and I spent four hours trying to sell a slinky, and it was not happening. <laughs> it was not happening. I couldn't make it happen. He was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So you had a metal thing that went downstairs, and that was the thing? That was, And sometimes it usually didn't even work? Like, oh, that my was God, your... it didn't even work. You're right, it didn't even work. Sometimes never. out of 10, it would go down one You'd have to, like, stop. push it, like, two steps. Like, no, come then, on, like... fucker, go, you little oh bastard. Who walks the stair without a care and shoots so high in the sky. Bounce up and down just like a clown. Everyone knows it's Slinky. Fuck. Yeah, all right, well, yeah. they're not wrong. Tough to sell that toy. <laughs> We should do a whole show about that, man. Like toys from back in the day that we used to love that would blow kids' minds today that we used to play with that shit. That is fucking hilarious. Fucking hilarious, man. A slinky. Yeah, I had literally tried. It wasn't four hours, but I tried to sell the body a a younger dude on the fun of the slinky. And yeah, it was not working. He was like, yeah, or whatever. (laughs) I'm going to go play Call of Duty, dude. Leave me alone. Uh, That's so funny. Fucking Jesus Christ. All right. Well, we do have two more jams we're going to okay. play for you. Then yeah, we're gonna get out of don't here go anywhere yet. And let you enjoy your, the rest of your Easter weekend. Um, we got ham. We got turkey. What are we doing? We're we going to eat up some good shit for Easter. Then? Of course. Sweet. That's what. That's, this is America. Skull. That's how we cooks, celebrate man. holidays. Skull can do the kicks, man. So there you go. Well, thank you to Help High again for coming by tonight and sharing the world premiere with us. That was very cool of you. Very much appreciate the conversation. Please do keep hanging out with us as we're going to be talking to Ghostkeeper. We're going to be talking to Schizophrenia. We're going to be talking to Necronomicon. And you're going to want to be here for all that, man. All kick-ass bands. And hopefully some other good ones. we got some things in the works. So keep hanging out. All right. So on that note, let's get out of here. You ready? Yeah. Two more jams for you. We're going to close with a twofer, starting with My Own Fears' new song, Ghosts on the Warpath, from their new album, Violence Made History. Which is the fu- just a fucking brilliant title in my opinion, man. Think, violence made history. How truer Every words day of the week. have never been yeah. spoken, man. Truer yeah. words have never been spoken. Violence did indeed make That's history. That's the only thing anybody's paying attention to. Well, so. yeah, no shit, yeah. man. No shit, man. Make fucking not violence. Anyhow, uh, that is out now, by the way. That is out now. Literally, that album came out about 13 minutes ago, so go and pick it up. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, and finally, let's do some legendary Paganizer. Paganizer has been very busy during the pandemic, you guys, man, because this is from their upcoming, I'm sorry, their EP, March of the Insane, which okay. just came out on March 31st. This EP just came out on Mar- March 31st. We're going to play the song Festering Dreams from it. But then on June 24th, they got a full length coming out, man. Wow. Right behind not it. Not even a month later. Okay. Dude, they're doing the thing. Fuck yeah. And that full length, by the way, will be called Beyond the Macabre. So okay. I love all of it. I'm a big Paganizer guy. I love those guys. All right. Very much kick ass. So. so get the one now and then mark your calendar for the next one. Yeah. Pre order that bitch if you can. So. Yeah. Fuck okay. yeah, man. Thanks all to Help High. Thanks to Scully. Thank you. Happy Easter, you guys, man. Thanks for hanging out with us for our show and help us grow, man. Grab a few metalheads and bring them and have them subscribe to our goofy channel. (laughs) Much love. Much metal. Happy Easter, everybody. See ya. See you next time. Like when you went away for Easter on your vacation, I missed you.
Easter bunny. Kind of out of funny, huh? Let's go. Remember when? Uh, remember when you were growing up and you wanted to color eggs for Easter? Where did you go? There was only one game in town. Pause. You went to pause, or you went to hell. Remember that? That was on the box. And because um, they had the monopoly, they could say that. Remember you got the kit? What did you get? You got the little color tablets. Remember those? And you put them in the water, and the water would smell like a vinegar fart. And then you would take. <laughs> the egg and put the egg in the little wire seat. Remember that? That little torture seat. Now nah, lower you to your doom. Scream all you want. Or like me, you put all the tablets into one glass and that would turn the eggs brown. Oh, can't get brown eggs, Patton. That's our little prodigy. Then um, you could punch out the back of the box. Remember that? And make a little egg holder. Oh, remember that? But like me, you wouldn't wait for the eggs to dry and then the box would dissolve and your dad would start drinking. That's not important. What's important is that that <laughs> is all the kid came with. But then remember in the 70s, all those upstart companies came along trying to unseat the Paws Dynasty. There was Shake and Egg. Remember Shake and Egg? You put the egg in the bag with the glitter. It came out looking all glam rocky like it fell out of David Bowie's ass or something. Hey, look. <laughs> Happy Easter. Bang a gong, everybody. And then Ronco came out with that weird Inquisition clamp. Remember that? You'd put the egg in the clamp, and then you'd put the magic marker in the clamp here, and then you'd turn the egg. Oh, oh, a line. There's a line on the egg. It's four o'clock in the morning. I went back in the drugstore recently looking for egg coloring kits. There's only one company standing. Pause, ladies and gentlemen. When you get the kit, you buy that kit, you know what you get? You get five color tablets, a little wire thing, you punch. They didn't change a thing! 
what chrome plated balls on those guys. They didn't, I just imagine their founder, some guy named Henry Paz going, let them go to their little shaken eggs or their Ronco things. They'll come crawling back. We're Paz. My father started this company with one color tablet and it was white and we were thankful. Paz. If I don't see you before Easter, have a nice one, okay? Did you see that? That was badass. <laughs> Their greed and callousness effectively turned the Easter Bunny into a Sleaster Bunny. Hey, this is Blake from Pig Destroyer, and you are listening to Metal O Mania. Hey, this is Pat from Pizza Death, and you're watching Metal O Mania with this Krypton Scully. <laughs> This just in, scientists have discovered that once you've been infected by metalomania, there is no cure. Contact Scully right away for more and more metal to feed the dragon.
properly. Yeah. All the pictures are good. Were you eating cake? What's on your face? She had one of those uh, eggs or something. Weird. Honey. Mom. Uncle Mitch. Uncle Mitch. You know I got a uh, train to catch, oh. so I should probably be going. <laughs> Yeah, you know the bunny outfits in high demand this Easter. I think you better leave. Yeah. Okay.